The Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Chapter 140, The True Form Tyra is curious to know what Nation's reaction was when he first saw the green sky of Fairyland. She says that this is because the foliage of the sacred tree simply covers the entire sky. What's more, the trunk of the sacred tree is so far away that it can't even be seen from where they are. So many mysterious plants grow at its top, but only the king of the fairies, Daddy, is allowed to go there. The mountain-like mushroom before our eyes is called the divine polyp. It's a small sprout that has grown from the roots of the sacred tree, incredible, right? And when he had finished telling her all this, Tyra then asked Nasians if she already knew about it. But the herbalist was thinking of something else, and with his back to Tyra he asked, when did you realize that I wasn't a boy and that I wasn't a girl either? How naive, it's very simple, since you always bathe in hiding, I accidentally took a peek at you, replied Tyra. However, Nasians didn't like the fact that she was spying on him. But in any case, Nasians recognizes that he is in fact neither a girl nor a boy. And noticing Nasians' frustration about this, Tyra then starts to tell her, you know, my second eldest brother, Sixtus, even though he has a strong fairy heritage, he can't accept the fact that his wings haven't grown yet. My third eldest brother, Belt, doesn't like being the only one in the family with pointy ears. But I don't think that's a problem. My fourth and fifth sisters, Zana and Zillian, both have a strong giant heritage, but they say it bothers them to be a little smaller than a full-blooded giant. And finally Feo, my sixth eldest sister, I still don't know if she will be our sister or our brother. When he hears this, Nasians is surprised. But then Tyra explains, if Feo falls in love with a boy, she'll be a girl, or if she falls in love with a girl, he'll be a boy. Dad said that this was relatively common among fairies. But still, Nations finds it very strange, but Tyra tells the fairies that it's not strange at all. And it's at that moment that Nations' head falls off, and he bursts out saying, but what are you trying to say, I'm a human. But Tyra wonders how he can be so sure of this, since he was found by a human, so it could mean. But Nations retorts by saying that he can't fly either, but Tyra soon realizes that fairies who can't fly are super common. And Tyra also points out that he says he feels better since he arrived in the fairy kingdom. And that this is quite strange, since no human can live perfectly in that world. Because the air in the fairyland is so dense and sweet that it ends up being poison for humans. So living there for too long would cause intoxication, asthma, or even severe weakness. So for Tyra, Nations was undoubtedly a fairy. But Nations fell into denial, he couldn't believe that he was a fairy. However, to reinforce this possibility even further, Tyra tells him that every human who visits the fairy kingdom must regularly take a mullen pill. Mullen was a herb with powerful sedative and astringent effects, very effective against asthma or coughs. And because it grew in the fairy realm, it had the effect of providing some kind of resistance to the hostile environment and poison. Then Nations remembers the pill that Mertley swallowed, and asks if it was Mullen. Well, if it was, that explains why his poison had almost no effect on him. However, Nations remembers that he didn't actually take the pill until after the two confronted each other, which means that he also took one before the fight began. This leads Nations to a surprising deduction. We then change scene, where we see Mertley with that elf returning to the fairy kingdom. The boy was carrying the fairy baby that he managed to undo the exchange before it was too late. And he hopes that Puck, that goblin, has learned his lesson, that he'll never do it again. Having said that, Mertley then releases him, saying that he is now free and also apologizes for having pointed her sword at him. And as for the baby, Mertley confesses to being a little envious of him, as he was visibly a fairy in every way. Hey, Mertley, are you really the son of the fairy king and the giant queen? 
Today, but especially in the past, this was one of the things that Mertley heard the most and it made him very angry. Apologize now, I'm the son of Harlequin and Diane through and through. That's what Mertley always shouted when this happened. However, his health had been fragile ever since he was a child. An intense cough was one of his most frequent symptoms. This is a mullen pill. Make sure you take one periodically. That's what his Harlequin father, the King of the Fairies, used to say. And even though Mertley found the taste of the medicine bitter, King insisted that it was for his own good. And with the help of this medicine and her dedication to strengthening herself, Mertley continued to improve her skills, especially with the sword. But at the same time, one thought kept echoing in his mind. Why can't I fly as the son of the King of the Fairies? Because I'm small, even though I'm the son of the Queen of Giants. However, the King of the Fairies asked Mertley not to let himself be carried away by the voices around him. Diane asks him never to forget who he is, our precious son, no matter what anyone says. Or what happens. Mertley was aware of the unconditional love he received, but still, every time he heard the kind and comforting words of his father and mother, he felt an intense anxiety that seemed to crush him. What if I wasn't their real son, but actually a changeling? That was the thought that crossed his mind the most. And that thought became even stronger when Nations arrived in the Fairy Kingdom. Because the resemblance between Nations and his parents was uncanny. And while he was lost in his thoughts and doubts, Puck called out to the prince, who soon came to his senses and wondered why he was still there. But he remembers that he has still untied the rope. But before he does, something catches Mertley's eye, and she begins to smell a strange odor. And this smell seemed to somehow affect the elf, who began to act strangely. And the same seemed to be happening to that fairy baby. But soon Mertley identifies that the scent is poisonous incense that has a deadly effect on fairies. Outraged, Mertley then shouts, Who are you? Reveal yourselves. And before him stood five mysterious figures. One of them was the one who led the meeting of the Horsemen of Chaos, being the emissary of the prophecy of the Four Knights of the Apocalypse. He is also the one who asks when he notices that Mertley has not been affected by the poisonous scent, so are you a human? A dark shadow visits the Fairy King's peaceful forest, what is its identity and its true intentions? Continued in the next chapter, entitled The Ancestral Elixir.